Hi everybody, it is October 31, 2017. It is Halloween and I hope that everyone stays safe. I posted this video yesterday, nanobots, nanosensors, nanoparticulates in our bodies, brains, in and on, everything control ready. Yes, control ready. Artificial intelligence, Internet of Things. Um, but I did receive some comments where people were asking if there was any lists of foods and products that contain nanoparticulates. Um, I did a little bit of research. Unfortunately, our FDA, our fabulous FDA, does not require the listing of nanomaterials in our foods, food packaging, products, food processing. So there is no way to to find any kind of list that is comprehensive, that is um, that contains uh, all of the foods and our food products and uh, other products, cosmetics, sunscreens. That would entail independent researchers to test every product on the shelf. So I will link below to this article as well as this site, Center for Food Safety. This is a very good site and I want to thank the subscriber who left this link below my video. It does have an awful lot of material um, uh, information that's very very important to your health and I did a search to find out what kinds of foods or products do have these nanoparticles. Um, Australia, New Zealand, you guys, I'm sorry to say that you have an awful lot of foods that contain nanoparticles in it. The Australia and New Zealand food standards, your uh, government agencies have claimed that there's little evidence of nanotechnology in food because no company had applied for approval. It has therefore not been tested nor regulated um, to find out if the use of these nanoparticles are in your foods. But new research shows evidence of widespread use of nano ingredients in popular food products despite your food standard agency's claims. It's not, not any Western country now, no citizens in these countries can trust their governments. Um, what I did find here in the United States, 13 foods with hidden cancer causing titanium dioxide, the nano nano size titanium dioxide that they are claiming is not harmful yet scientists have said that when you nano size titanium or copper or silver uh, there's a list of these nanoparticles they don't even understand what they are doing inside the bodies whether you're human or four-legged because they change their properties and they're not understanding those changes. But some of the foods that have nano-sized titanium dioxide condiments including mayonnaise, mustard, horse, horse radish, cream, and vinegar, nut spreads such as almond and peanut butter, confectionery sugar, desserts such as custard, tapioca pudding, sherbet, sherbet, sherbet and sorbet, Sausages, energy drinks labeled as sport, energy, electrolyte, beverages with a water base, cottage, uh, cheese, cream, and processed cheeses, processed deli meats, canned fish products, all of them, tuna fish, dairy drinks including chocolate milk, eggnog, kefir, great. <laughs> 
I drink kefir, or uh, whey based drinks. Prepared foods such as potato and macro macaroni salad, and foods containing battered fish or poultry, processed snacks such as Twinkies and powdered donuts, and oral supplements can also contain titanium dioxide. Other foods or products that contain nanomaterials are Elmer's glue. And remember, these nano-sized particulates can penetrate the skin. So you put Elmer's glue on something, you get it on your fingers, and the nanoparticulates can penetrate right through your skin. Daisy low-fat cottage cheese. Burt's Bees chemical-free sunscreen. Albertson's coffee creamer, as well as Nestle's coffee creamer. I will link below to all of the articles that um, that are showing you that I'm not just making this stuff up. I know a lot of people use Nestle's coffee creamer and the articles linked to below uh, contain also Nestle's. Vanilla milkshake um, pop-tarts as well, cornflakes, caramelized sugar, anything that contains caramelized sugar, and breads. But getting back to this list, dockers go khaki, nanoparticulates in the pants, Dannon Greek plain yogurt, Eclipse spearmint gum, Dove powder deodorant, Aquafresh toothpaste, Betty Crocker whipped cream frosting, um, this foot massager, wishbone ranch dressing, Colgate toothpaste, Dentine ice gum, Hawaiian Tropic Sheer Touch Sunscreen, Miracle Whip, Peeps, I guess this is like a, I don't know, Easter candy, uh, Fiber One Cereal, Head and Shoulders 2-in-1 Shampoo, Hershey's Chocolate Syrup, Old Spice High Endurance Deodorant, Breath Savers Mints, Intel Core du processor, Duo Processor, Kraft American Singles, Kool-Aid, Lemonade, Silk Vanilla Soy Drink. But understand this, these are the products tested for the nanomaterials. So I would believe that all silk products contain these nanoparticulates. Aveeno Continuous Protection Sunblock. Aveeno is a product that I actually use, and I'm wondering if it's also in its, uh, you know, the skin conditioning products. Betty Crocker Mashed Potatoes. Oreo Cookies. And this is a site the project on emerging nanotechnologies. They have a consumer products inventory, which I found very, very useful. Again, I will link below to everything, but if you scroll down, you will see that there's a browse, there's a search, there's an about section. If you go to the browse section, you will see that you have a lot of categories in which you can browse for companies or uh, the categories of foods or products, um, the countries where the use of nanotechnology is being used, these nano particulates being put in products and foods, um, and an awful lot of other information here. So it's a very easy, user-friendly, I guess that's the term, user-friendly site. Uh, categories, appliances, automotive, cross-cutting, electronics and computers, food and beverage, goods for children, health and fitness products, home and garden products, all of which contain 
nanoparticulates. And so I will leave a link below to the Browse page. Um, the Center for Food Safety also lists candy companies. Uh, Mars has committed to phasing out harmful nanoparticles from their food products, but the many companies that are using uh, the nanoparticles in their candies, M&Ms, um, the list is long. So is organic safe from this? No, it's not. So when you put in these synthetic nano materials into organic foods, into the processing of these foods, these foods are no longer organic. I will link below to all of the articles. But yes, nanomaterials are being used in organic products, organic foods. And they, these articles also have an awful lot of uh, end notes in which you can find more information if you want to. But National Organic Program leaves door open to nanotechnology in organic. This was posted March 2015 on the Center for Food Safety site. I tried to find something that led me to believe that the National Organic Program, which is the USDA's program to see if they banned nanotechnology, which many organ organic farmers wanted them to do, I have not been able to find that ban yet. Decision stuns organic community and undercuts recommendations of its appointed advisory board, the National Organic Standards Board. The nanotechnology is not the only thing that organic producers and organic consumers need to worry about. Blistering USDA organic report suggests movement needs major reforms, September 2017. We're being duped. And I'm not going to read the entire article. I will link below to it, but you need to read it. Organic avocados from Mexico that you buy in your grocery store that are double the price of regular avocados are not organic. And any organic foods that contain corn or soy produced in the United States is not organic because corn and soy have been taken over. We don't have organic corn unless some small organic farmer in your own community is somehow growing it. But our corn and our soy is genetically modified. So why are organic companies importing corn and soy from Turkey and other countries? Because we don't have any organic corn or soy in our country. But what are they finding? They're being duped by these companies. And the National Organic Program that is run under the USDA is very slack. It doesn't have much oversight, and it doesn't have many tight controls. So many of the organic imports that are coming into our country are not so organic, which is very concerning. Um, look, if your government actually wants to depopulate your country, if you have a medical establishment and a pharmaceutical industry that wants you to remain sick, if you have an FDA that is banning um, supplements and uh, sending in SWAT teams to shut down organic producers of um, many healthful products, you know your government <laughs> under the USDA is not going to be um, 
very concerned about the organic products that are lining the shelves for consumers. One would kind of assume that the organic products may not be all that organic. So, yeah, even you can't just go by our labels also. I mean, that's ridiculous because we lie everywhere and corporations are allowed to lie. They use the words natural and organic on products that have been shown to not be natural or organic. All foods labeled organic aren't necessarily the same. Suspicions raised over imports. One of the biggest threats to U.S. organic farming, those in the industry say, comes from products labeled organic but aren't the real deal. Now, I want to read this, and let me, let me just get this a little bigger for you and me to read. Okay, agriculture in the United States. Single, this is the nanotechnology. This is the uh, nano, their wide-scale influence in food processing, food packaging, in our supplements, and the use of nano materials in agriculture. Single molecule detection to determine enzyme substrate interactions. Nano capsules for delivery of pesticides, fertilizers, and other agrochemicals more efficiently. Delivery of growth hormones in a controlled fashion. Nano sensors for monitor, monitoring soil conditions and crop growth. Nano chips for identity uh, preservation and tracking. Nano sensors for detection of animal and plant pathogens. Nano capsules. Nano capsules to deliver vaccines. And nano particles to deliver DNA to plants. Targeted genetic engineering. What, is, what does some of this mean? It means that the use of nanotechnology, a lot of farmers are wowed by it because they learned that negatively charged particles were able to move into the veins of a plant, making them a good fit for a farmer who wanted to apply, apply a fungicide. Neutrally charged particles went into the tissue of the leaves, which would be beneficial for growers who wanted to fortify a food with nutritional value. You know our government, the USDA, the FDA, do not want us healthy, do not want on the market foods that are actually good for us, but of course they lie and say Genetically modified foods are absolutely safe, and these nanoparticles, nanotechnology used now in our plants, in our um, grains, in our uh, food supply is perfectly safe. And they claim that these foods actually help, uh, these foods, these nanoparticles help to deliver nutrients to us. They use these nanoparticles to add to the taste of food, color, texture, the shelf life of food. And then they claim that they help deliver nutrients. They are, they are altering our entire food supply. Why can't they just leave things alone so that we can just buy foods that were just kind of naturally here for us? That is no doubt an organic apple. The apples that you see with th th that are shiny, that have a coating on them, and it's not just apples, but it's on an awful lot of fruits as well as vegetables, peppers and 
other kinds of vegetables, they're not organic. And an apple, just about a week ago, I tried to get that waxy substance off of it. I couldn't get it off the apple, the outside of it. But understand this, that even peeling the apple, you're still, all of these nanoparticles are leaching into the fruit itself, as well as all of the aluminum foils that contain nanoparticles, food packaging, it leaches into the foods. So food wrappings containing nano silver, which releases ions, these ions could leach into the food and the ions are toxic. And I do want to uh, bring your attention to um, another site, the nano database site, search database, which I will link to below. Um, and you can just put in the search bar, whatever it is that you are searching. This seemed a little uh, less inclusive of all of the products and foods that this other site that I showed you, um, which is, where is it? The project on emerging nanotechnologies. Let me just quickly go through. Um, let's go through. Uh, let me see if I have it open. Do I, do I? No, I closed it. Um, let's go through, let's go through food and beverage. All right. Um, products, one of 25 of 118 products within their food and supplement category that contain nanoparticles. And many are uh, supplements that I know that a lot of people buy. This particular kind of zeolite, uh, this kind of zeolite spray, collodial silver, and this nanotech nutrients aluminum foil from top pits, um, antibacterial kitchenware, antibacterial kitchenware. My God, I didn't even know that was a product. Wasn't washing kitchenware enough? I guess not. Um, but many sports drinks, many uh, Supplement drinks are within this. Beer bottle plastics, um, many uh, pots and pans, cookware, uh, bionic joint support, fresh box silver, nanoparticle food storage containers, clean products, canola active oil, collodial silver, this company uh, is marketing it, these creams, these liquids, these throat sprays, uh, these soft gels, refrigerators even have nano particles in them. So it, you can check it out, but I did see a couple of products that I know that people are using, so that's why I wanted to bring this to your attention. And uh, since they don't know that nanoparticles and how they are using them are safe, and studies have already proven that they are not safe, then we need to be very careful. And yeah. <laughs> We need to do research on virtually everything that we are buying, even the clothing that is using these uh, nanoparticulates in the clothing.
they can leach from the the clothing into your skin. Meso Gold. Uh, I've seen these products as well being sold around here in South Carolina. So this is the world that has manifested and we need to be very careful in terms of what we are consuming. Granola, a B12 vitamin spray, and creams, nano. I, I would stay away from anything that is labeled as nano. Nano plastic wrap. Okay, so all the links are below. I hope you all stay well and stay safe.